crypto contagion fears are lingering in the crypto industry, in the markets, with Bitcoin miner Core Scientific, the latest company to file for bankruptcy in the wake of FTX's implosion. Joining us now to talk, to talk about the bearish sentiment out there is Justin Sun. He's the Tron founder, Huobi Global Advisor, and ambassador of Granada to the WTO. Justin, always a pleasure having you on the show. So there's just a general unease out there also about the health of another crypto exchange, Binance, and the exchange's dominance in the space right now. And there were reports last week that you withdrew a combined $50 million from the crypto exchange, but you also tweeted a link to Etherscan showing that you had deposited $100 million in USDC back into the exchange. Can you clarify what happened? Yes, I have done business with Binance since 2017, so since they first founded. Um, so basically, I think from this way, I want to show the confidence for um, Binance Exchange. I, I think in the past, Binance has been through uh, lots of crises, uh, including I remember in 2019, they have like a 7,000 Bitcoin hack. At that time, I think I always want to be um, play the role to help Binance to grow and show the confidence to their business. So that's why uh, we are see lots of FUD and also uh, people uh, is talking about uh, withdrawal funds from Binance. Uh, I actually uh, deposit 100 million USDC into Binance to show uh, our confidence. What did you, why did you decide to take money out as well? Oh, okay. Uh, so basically the take money out like happened earlier. So um, because uh, I just like uh, swap uh, BUSD uh, with different blockchain, so, and then uh, somebody see the addresses actually withdraw around, I, I think total uh, $50 million out of Binance. So there's lots of the people uh, talking about is Binance uh, have any mm -hmm. problems or anything. So that's why also uh, the deposit is kind of like a, a, a clarification for um, the withdrawal I, I have done before, which is, totally like uh, normal business. So you mentioned there's a lot of FUD out there, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, especially last week we saw with Binance billions of dollars leaving the exchange. There were concerns that some of the problems happening at FTX were also perhaps existing in Binance in terms of maybe they were commingling funds between Binance US and uh, Binance International. Maybe they're BNB token, uh, which was their native, which is their native exchange token, was being used in a way to make their value exponentially more than what it is, and uh, concerns that BSC, the Binance Smart Chain, is being is too centralized. Uh, we, we're unsure how much CZ owns. Are those worries real or at all concerning to you? As as far as I know, um, I think currently business uh, current Binance business uh, is healthy, and also uh, since we have done lots of business with them, uh, I think it's all one to one. I redeem uh, and mint BUSD all the time. Uh, as far as I know, uh, right now all the business is not uh, back to normal. And even though we have seen uh, billions of dollars withdraw from Binance, I, I think last week, but I think right now for this week, uh, the money inflow and the outflow um, become, I, I think, back to normal. So that's why I believe the thought about Binance probably is be the, the last uh, negative news about crypto uh, industry hopefully in this year and for next year we can start to see the bull rally well mr ambassador where do you suppose uh binance is getting that billion dollars that it's using to purchase voyager voyager's assets and why are they purchasing it um it, you know obviously there's this belief that it might have been at a discount but nonetheless uh why are they expanding at a time when they're seeing all these outflows yes Sure, definitely. Uh, I think for the uh, deal with Voyager, it has been uh, quite a long battle between Binance and the FTX. 
Um, so uh, before um, the implosion of FTX, I, I think um, FTX actually uh, win the bid. So I, I think that Binance has been on this Voyager acquisition uh, for quite a long time. So so that's why uh, after uh, FTX exit from um, this particular acquisition, I think seems Binance to be the only choice here. Do you have an update on your algorithmic stablecoin USDD? Last week you tweeted that you were, quote, deploying more capital, steady lads, which is uh, obviously a nod to Do Kwan <laughs> when he was trying to save his own algorithmic stablecoin, Terry oh USD, which uh, ultimately didn't work out. <laughs> Why yes. are you scaring your customers um, like that? <laughs> um, so I think this is more like a, a, a meme, right? So it's like a crypto meme. So so everybody uh, is using steady lace um, to <laughs> to show this kind of become like a um, crypto community meme. So that's why I I tweeted this way. Um, but also at the same time, I think USDD um, price has been stable and uh, is about like nine. Uh, 98 cents like all the time so i think probably within this week after all the fun is gone it's gonna be back to a uh, one-to-one pack and also uh, I, I think i'm happy to see uh marky is start to learn about the difference between usdd um uh, trx and the uh, usd luna uh, comparison right so that's why uh, we, we have seen the trx um, price is also outperform even Bitcoin and the Ethereum uh, this week. So uh, we didn't see like any uh, USDT FUD have any impact on TRX price anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, True USD also is launching uh, TCNH, which is a Tron based yes. stablecoin pegged to the offshore Chinese Yuan. Maybe you can explain how yes. it works for us. Sure, for sure. So actually, you know, Chinese yuan has been a long uh, dominant currency for crypto industry, I think 2013. So start from 2013 to 2017, actually the major uh, um, fiat dominates the crypto market is Chinese yuan. After, you know, 2017, the major exchange exit from Chinese yuan market uh, we start to see what we have seen today. All the major stable coin in the market is dominated by US dollars. So that's why I believe this is a very good chance for us to collaborate with not only TrueSD, but also Tether to issue um, TUSD, oh, sorry, TCNH and uh, CNHT on Tron. I believe in the next year, um, probably we will see much um, uh, traffic and also attraction on Chinese Yuan because lots of people, I, I believe at least uh, 2 billion people uh, in Asia, um, they are prefer Chinese Yuan uh, rather than US dollar. So so that's why also uh, we, we will have seen like Chinese, uh, Chinese government has opened up their border and uh, um, Chinese people life is back to normal. So I We'll, I believe we will see uh, the Chinese yuan will have lots of uh, attraction in the future. Uh, it, nonetheless, I mean, obviously, you would be, potentially be competing with the with the CBDC at some point if you're doing a stablecoin <laughs> uh, uh, on stablecoin. Will you have? Um, Will, will you have any pushback from the Chinese government? Are there any restrictions uh, to this uh, stablecoin for either Chinese citizens or, or how much you can do, et cetera, um, to prevent it from uh, potentially turning into a printing of yuan? Because, of course, uh, you know, I, do you have to, you know, are there any restrictions as in terms of making sure that they're exchanging actual yuan in the markets for ones that are uh, for the stable coin or are you taking in dollars, for instance, and issuing the uh, yes. on? Yes, sure. So um, right now the product we are issuing is offshore Chinese yuan. So it's one to one to uh, Chinese yuan, of course, um, but in the offshore bank. So, so basically uh, um, you will have just like same with USDT, USDC, uh, you uh, have one-to-one of the currency in the bank. 
Um, but the difference is compared to the Chinese yuan Chinese people use every day. This is offshore Chinese yuan uh, in offshore banks. So that's why uh, we don't have any limitation on how much you can purchase or how much you can redeem every day. So basically this is like a limited uh, usage. Uh, and also, of course, we have seen uh, lots of people in Asia, especially in Hong Kong, um, uh, using uh, Chinese yuan uh, all the time. Um, so that's why I believe this is also uh, be a very good option for um, traditional FX trading uh, and, and also for even their daily usage. Uh, and also at the same time, we have seen uh, a big policy change happening in Hong Kong. So Chinese, uh, sorry, Hong Kong government uh, embraced crypto uh, and, and also recently launched ETF. So that's why I believe uh, in the future, uh, Chinese government actually is very uh, open and uh, optimistic about crypto. And uh, I believe Hong Kong is the first experiment and they will continue to move and adopt crypto in the future. All right. Well, oh. Justin, we see your tweet. Yeah, you, you mentioned that you can purchase licensed BTC futures ETF in China legally starting today, if you understand. Recently, Any Hong Kong also launched its first two exchange traded funds for crypto futures and turning the city into a regional digital asset hub rivaling Singapore. Uh, do you see China and Hong Kong uh, becoming the leaders again? in the crypto industry. Yes, I, I think definitely this is uh, what I will predict will happen in the future. Uh, because before that, I think 2017, 2013, these two um, bull markets is dominated by uh, actually Chinese buying power. Um, 2021 is the first time, you know, US become one of the dominant power for bull markets, uh, but I think, I believe the next bull markets will still be uh, Chinese money. Uh, actually, uh, from this regulated Hong Kong ETF, um, many people don't know is actually you can purchase in mainland China. So because mainland China and Hong Kong uh, has this kind of the channel, so basically you can use even onshore uh, Chinese yuan to purchase Hong Kong stock uh, versus versa, right? So that's why uh, I believe um, this first ETF probably is the first step. And the second step, we will see uh, more and more asset managed company start to launch product for crypto and the people from China, they can use money to buy uh, those uh, Hong Kong products from this kind of the special channel between uh, Hong Kong and mainland China. So that's why I believe this is the first experiment. It's just like Shenzhen uh, experiment, right? When first, when Chinese government introducing the opening policies, uh, they want to make sure uh, this in a small special region so people can do the experiment first before they uh, promote uh, across um, the whole country. So that's why I believe Hong Kong is playing Shenzhen role right now to become the experiment region for crypto. 